Hello again. Uh, I'm Dan. This is my Let's Play, where I am Let's Playing Making a Game Instead of Playing a Game. And we are once again working on my game, Ninja Jim. So, last week, we talked about how I wanted to do a thing. Let me throw my head to the other side of the screen real quick. So, you may recall, cutscene prompt just came up to the side. And had that little yellow flashy there to make sure the player sees it. There is not a cutscene here yet, because I haven't actually made the cutscene system. I need to do that now. All I have is the prompt that comes up, which is an important first step. Okay, let's go take a look at things. Okay, okay, okay. Let's look up the level. Test level 12. So, I have an object here. Let me turn the grid off. It's uh, my cutscene object. Let me see if I find the object itself real quick. Oh, I already have this open. Scene test 001. So, right now all this does is um, if the ninja is within 200 pixels... It sets the master controller to flag to say, hey, there's cutscene icon, and also tells them what the ID is. Uh, that's just in case the ninja is within range of multiple cutscenes at a time, specific won't come up. Like right now, this one's in a specific location, but maybe a cutscene will be following an NPC around. It's when you're in range of the NPC. I got to, this is going to be all super generalized and stuff. What's what's our next steps? Oh yeah, and also let's let's come over here real quick and our drawing the HUD and come down. This is our cutscene stuff. This turns the alpha up and down on the icon. This sets it at the right location, and this this draws the little yellow flashy bits. Simple, simple. That's all I'm doing. All I'm doing is drawing the icon. So what do I need to do when the when the button presses. I need to start the cutscene. I kind of want this all generalized. Like, I'm going to be turning this all into scripts and stuff. Actually, let's let's just start with scripts. Like, I was going to all copy-paste into scripts later. Let's, let's do this now. Now, I don't know if I talked about this much yet, but the idea for cutscenes, most cutscenes are just going to be events out in the world that the ninja comes across. Uh, the ninja is going to be just mostly a passive observer to a lot of the story. Um, and then there's going to be cutscenes the ninja's directly involved in that, yeah, that the ninja will be directly involved in. Those are going to mostly come up automatically. Those will be like chapter book endings, or I want to tell the player specific information. And those apartments aren't going to come up for. That's just going to happen right away. And I don't want to do a whole ton of duplicated coding, so I want to have a very, very generalized cutscene system. Because I'd like to have a lot of them. I, I want to do a lot of world building with this. So we are not going to finish this today, but we're going to get a start on this today. So let's, let's create some. So presumably everything should function exactly the same. I'm just doing this from generalized scripts. So... What are things we need to do? We'll need to we'll need to know when the cutscene is started. We need a way to cut cu cu start the cutscene. That means I know the scene button's been pressed. What's going to happen? Okay, so if they press the button, and the master controller is looking at this scene as the scene that's active, because again, there might be multiple might be multiple cutscene objects in range of the ninja, and I only want to start one of them. So I'm only going to start the one that's last talked to the master controller. I might fi figure out a way of prioritizing these later on. Not going to worry about that today. We're going to make the variable... Man, it's noisy outside. I'm in the middle of a snowstorm right now. They're plowing the parking lot. Anyway, we're going to say... No, I'm going to call it... Um, nah, yeah, it seems like. Seems like equals one. 
So that means scene is started. Prox control. It's called prox because this um, code mostly, a lot of this code is from my last game, uh, Stargirl Proxima. So there's still a handful of references to Stargirl Proxima in the code as the main character. But yeah. So if they've pressed cutscene button and the scene flag is up that the icon's showing, and this is the ID that the master controller has, we will start the cutscene and turn the ninja's controls off. The thing I like is that turning the controls off doesn't actually turn the camera movement around off. You still move the camera around while there's cutscene going on. I actually like that and I'm going to keep it. Okay, so what happens next? What happens next needs to be kind of specific from cutscene to cutscene, which is why we're going to end up... Why, why we need to make like the specific cutscene code that we want to have and then generalize it after the fact. Or generalize it as we're going. But I, I can you tell I did no planning on how I was going to do this? This is increasingly feeling like the sort of thing maybe I should have done on my own and explain it after the fact. But that's not what we're doing today. All of the things that happen here out only happen if there is, in fact, a cutscene happening. I want the camera to go over to where the cutscene object is. Oh, you know, I, want, I want two things to happen. I used to have the HUD alpha set by the L trigger, and that kind of got deactivated while I was redoing the controls. So it doesn't exist right now, but yeah. You know, I need I need an extra cut. I need to tell the master controller that a cutscene is happening. I have a hunch this isn't going to work. But what we're doing is, since now we're telling... The mask controller that there's a cutscene and I notice what the what ID for the cutscene object is. This feels like a mistake. But we're gonna go with this for now and I can change it later. Right, so if there's a cutscene active, we're just make it so it knows what the scene object is and follow the scene object. K K K K K Okay, so what should happen now is if I walk over to the cutscene and I press the start button, the ninja, I should lose controls of the ninja and the camera moves to where the cutscene object is. And then the game basically soft crashes because I have no way to turn the ninja's controls back on. That's fine. Run over here. Prompt comes up. And that seemed to work. Oh, it did turn my camera controls off. I don't like that. I need to I need to fix that. The game's all framey right now because I'm not recording in game mode because I'm just coming in and out of the slot. And I hit the cutscene button. So now, 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 the camera controls should still work. All right, and I'll run over here. Hit select. And the camera controls still work. Good. I have a cutscene officially starting. That's good. Did the HUD turn off? Now I gotta check real quick to make sure the HUD turned off because I don't remember. If it did, I was paying attention. I could presumably go watch back this video, but it's easier for me to just turn the game on. I did. Okay, I did turn the HUD off. Cool. I'd like it to fade out and so just shut off. But good. The thing I'm going to presumably do at some point, and I'm not doing now, is that the cutscene will only be available at certain times of day. Like, I only want cutscene there in the morning or the evening or whatever. And it'll be only available during a certain part of the story. Like, the cutscene's only there, like, in the first couple chapters. Not making that right now because I don't really have any of that sorted out. I hate when I make systems that need to reference other systems that don't exist yet. So my next step is I want to make a text box pop up. You may have seen me use this in my vids every once in a while. So presumably, uh, one, 
two, three. Three lines of text. Um, I'm not planning on using icons for the character speaking. All right, so we're going to just take this. I might, I might have a dynamically changing box size. Right now, I don't think I'm going to do that. And it's a, I, I leave, I leave strings that going to be display default error because if it's showing up and I haven't said it's something else, that means something got screwed up. I'm just going to straight up steal address bar stuff. It might be slightly wrong. That's fine. What does all this do? So I put this here. That means once the cutscene starts, it should draw a text box. And that's the wrong box. It changed box. It's, it's under, it's under the uh, railing there. That need be fixed. And hmm. Um, I like the location of that box. Yep. Location of the text box is good. It's over top of stuff now, which is good. Let's see if we can make it show some text. I'm going to add a thing right to right to this. Basically making the basically making making it so I can exit out of this easier. But this will this will make testing a little bit easier for me that I can turn the cutscene off. Okay, so this is where this bit of text is gonna end up being a mess. So just so the test line of text. Okay. Okay. So if I've done everything I think I've done, which I definitely haven't, there's definitely gonna break it break. I should have some text in the text box. Uh, there's definitely text in the text box. I've definitely definitely succeeded at that. Okay. We have a start. What did I screw up? What didn't I screw up? Okay, so Okay, so we have text in the text box, sort of, mostly, and canceling, ah, well canceling took me out of the cutscene, it didn't turn, uh, didn't turn the text box off. What do I need to do? I need to fix the spacing on how the text draws and make sure it line breaks at the end of the box. I think there's... Draw text transform extended that I need to look into to make sure this goes uh, everything I need. Uh, and the space seems too far, but we're getting close. We're getting close to what I want. And I cancel it, and I can cancel all the cutscene. And for some reason, I don't know what, I didn't turn the HUD back on. Like, I noticed the, uh, the prompt button didn't come back up, but, like, no, the HUD as a whole did not come back up. Alright, I need to fix that. I'm not sure if the, uh, person speaking, because right now it doesn't come clear that the ninja's speaking. I may need to look at other cutscenes, or uh, cutscenes in other games. So I really don't want to make the first line a different color. That's, that's actually kind of a pain in the butt to do. So let's let's play around with this a little bit more. Because we're making the second line here. So if I have two lines of text, that's that's enough to call a test cutscene. The way this should work, pressing the select goes to the next stage of the scene. Pressing cancel goes to the end scene. The end scene was what the cancel button did a couple minutes ago, but now getting to stage two, the, after the second line, that will also go to end scene, and we will have the bare minimum of a cutscene without any nice animations or anything, just the basic functionality of some text boxes coming up. Okay, start of the cutscene. Oh, that didn't line break. But it worked! Why didn't it line break? 
It did work though. It went it went from one line to the next line, canceled. You know, so all this stuff of the next stage, cancel out of scene, exit scene. This is actually all stuff we can create a script for right now. Are. Yeah, see so what we like about this is like the only only code that's specific to this is telling it what to do at different stages of the cutscene. This is what I want. And just it's just passing information along. So maybe like I'm gonna to have to have NPCs walking around at some point. We will figure out how to generalize that later. And we'll need to generalize the animation later. I am not worrying about that right now at this moment. Okay, what? This place looks interesting. It's still this. It's still not cutting off the line. Why is it not cutting off the line? Maybe that has, has to be the hard dumber because of the way I'm scaling it. I don't know. All right, well, that worked. So yeah, now we have the basics. Well, wait for the room again. Uh, basics of a cutscene. Basics of a oh, there's one other thing I need to test. And oh, that doesn't look right. Ha <laughs> ha. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. Having two different fonts render at different scales is a choice I made. All right, so it's slightly broken. It's supposed to render at the exact same size as the normal font, and it is not doing that. You know what? You know what? I think. I think fixing this is not in the scope of what I'm working on today. That's my decision. This is not in scope. I'm doing a generalized generalized cutscene system, so all the text, all the text is being drawn like this in this one thing. So I just need to come back. Uh, uh, uh. Oh man, it's not even working with my normal thing anymore now. What broke? What broke? Right in the front and front and front and front and front and front and just like slowly knock that number higher and higher until it works, which is the wrong way to do this. So I should like know what the correct number is. Ah, uh, so that works. I have no idea how I got to the right number, which is the sort of thing that tells me that I definitely didn't have the right number. I guess this is, I, I did the math wrong somewhere and it looks right, but that means whenever I'm putting other fonts in, it's going to be wrong. I need to figure out, I need to figure out what the right number is there and not trialing and erroring it. Trialing and erroring is just a recipe for disaster. I need to need to figure out what the correct number is and how I'm supposed to get that correct number. Who decided this game was going to have text? None of my other games have text. Only in the pause screen. Who decided cutscenes was a good idea? What maniac decided this game should have cutscenes? Okay, and that's right, as it needs to check for how zoomed in the camera is. Okay, so we have the basics of a cutscene system. It's not a very in-depth cutscene system. All it does is go through lines in a text box very harshly with no animation. But for like a first order playing around with stuff... I'm happy. Uh, we're going to call this a day. This is fine. This works. It's the beginning of a cutscene system. Yeah, we're going to call it good. I'm going to keep... 
tinkering with this. I might just like literally just start recording the next episode right after I finish editing this, keep working on the system. Anyway, thank you for watching my episode of working on Ninja Jim. Um, call to action nonsense. Like, comment, subscribe. Tell me what you think. Tell me what you think I can do better. Um, especially when it comes to these videos. These videos are very much a, a prototype. So, I will see you next time, and you have a good week.